Welcome to the Game Set and Match Davis Cup Special, the South Africa against Ireland tie which was held at the Irene Country Club. We'll be showing you all the action from the tie as well as what happened behind the scenes. We caught up with Earl Granger, captain of South Africa, and also Connor Nyland of Ireland earlier in the week leading up to the tie. I think we've got to look to the future, we've got to look to the next couple of years. I said it's an important time, make no mistake about it. We're not here to, to try and win, we, we're here to win. And uh, I mean, it's a relegation battle, so we, we've got to come out and win this tie. And we're going to do everything that's possible to win the tie. Um, is there pressure? Yes, there's pressure, but it's a nice pressure for us. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't be here, you know what I mean? We're playing for the country and we're playing for everyone who's, who, who plays a role in tennis and uh, we're here to fight and I do believe that we've got the right team to win this time. I, I know Fritz Walrens very well, you know, I've practiced with him many times. Um, you know, we would have played a lot of the same tournaments together um, over the years. Um, the other three guys I, I never came across as a player. Um, so the information I have was all sort of, uh, you know, some, some research on their results and, and, and game styles and things. One of the innovations that Earl Granger has brought to Davis Cup and Fed Cup is motivational talks. And this time he used the head coach of the Hauteng Lions, Johan Ackerman, as well as the defence coach, JP Ferreira. One of the traditions of Davis Cup ties is the official dinner, which is held prior to the tie taking place. This year the teams arrived in style, including vintage cars. Upon arrival at Irene Country Club, they were met by representatives of Tennis South Africa as well as the other dignitaries. Good evening and welcome to this Davis Cup tie, South Africa versus Ireland. Good luck to the teams and play tennis in the spirit to which we are all accustomed tennis to be played. Thank you. We are very much honoured and it's a very, very important tournament in the city. We started hosting it last year, you know, as you know, the organisers, you know, we felt that they've invited the city to partner with them, you know, because the event is happening in the capital of South Africa. Well, I think it's important from a couple of perspectives. The one is that uh, we are affording opportunity to youngsters in this country and therefore on the continent that uh, otherwise would not have access uh, to come and be a spectator, to watch in the home front something that's happening right on African soil. During the course of the dinner, as tradition has it, the players exchange gifts. The South African Junior Davis Cup team were presented with their blazers prior to leaving for Madrid at the end of September. On a lighter note, the Irish captain made their physio, Nick Green, make a speech. Why? Because this was the first time in 17 ties that he'd actually spoken in public. I won't keep you long. I just want to say a few short words to thank you all for coming out here tonight to help me celebrate my 17th tie as now I'm playing physio. It genuinely means a lot that you all came out here just for me. Um, tonight is it's a little bit overwhelming it's, it's very special thank you the draw for the order of play for the Davis Cup is rather unusual as the four singles players names go into a hat or in this case a milk churn at the Irene dairy farm and James McGee's name was first out which meant that on the opening day he would play South Africa's Fitz Malmorons followed by Tucker Forster against Sam Barry after the draw was made, both teams went to the dairy and were given first-hand experience of milking the cows. How was that experience? Yeah, it was fun. It was definitely, definitely unique. Um, I didn't expect coming down to South Africa, playing them in tennis, I'd be in here milking cows. But um, yeah, no, it was fun and, and uh, I think they put on a great show here at the dairy farm for the draw ceremony. So yeah, it's been a fun morning. Ruan, this is possibly something you didn't expect to do at a Davis Cup tie. Um, yes, I didn't expect this, but I've actually done it once before. The previous time we played at Irene, and it's a lot of fun. It's a great experience and some, definitely something different.
Tennis South Africa had also organised plenty of off-court activities for the spectators to enjoy. The main feature was the 67-minute clinic in recognition of Nelson Mandela's birthday for the local children. Tomorrow day, hi, welcome to Davis Cup and the, cl and the clinic. What are we actually trying to do with the kids here? Um, we're just trying to get them involved playing with the pros so they can see, you know, what South African tennis is all about. Um, and the pros have been very kind to actually play with these guys. This is going to be a memory for the rest of their lives. I see you using the green dot ball. Yeah, the, all the under 12s in the country have to play with the green dot play in stables. So what that means is it's a little bit slower than the normal ball. It gives them a chance. Yeah, this is a way of introducing them to the game, isn't it? And making that ball a little bit slow and a little bit easier for them. Yes, it makes it a little bit slower so they have a chance to get into the game and then once they get to a certain level they get to move on to the normal ball. So we're looking at today at the future Fitzfarmerons, Tucker Forsters, Nicholas Skoltz for the future are we? Hopefully yeah. <laughs> Tamara just explain to us the development programs you've got in operation in the Pretoria area. Okay, well we have here at Irene Country Club, we have an ICC development program and we have about 60 kids that we go and coach actually at Irene Middle School. It's their only sport, they don't do any other sport other than us. We get the program funded from big corporates and they come in and they get to play um, almost on a professional level, you know, they get to train. So we're trying to get some, some stars out of here. Um, and then also at the CSIR, there's a, a project run by my mom actually, very passionate about it. Um, her Always good to advertise. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Um, no, but it, it's great. She does everything voluntarily and there's about 80 kids every Saturday morning that are playing at the CSIR. And there are actually many other small programs that are starting up now. So I think we've done well to inspire, you know, a lot of people to, to give back to the sport. With the emphasis on township development, what have we got in the places like Mamalodi and Attridgeville? Um, there's there's a program going. It's tough to, to have a lot of commitment from the coaches in that area, but there are one or two absolute stars that are starting to get consistency and get the kids come out. You know, it, it's, it's tough to get all the kids to come out every single day, you know, but they come out twice a week, three times a week, and they get a chance to play and, you know, be coached for a little while. And some of the older ones, as 10, 12 year olds, have you been able to let them play in tournaments? Yes, definitely. We actually, we just had a couple of weeks ago, we had an Irene event on the grass over here. You can still see all the lines where they're playing. And there were about 30 development kids that were entered into that at our expense, which is great. We were able to do that for the first time. And then we also have a development tournament run by CSR and Proactive. Um, and we had 150 kids in that that were playing. So it's, it's awesome to see that. You having fun this morning? Yeah, I am. I am. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I am. How long have you been playing tennis for? Three years. Three years. And where do you play here at Irene? Uh, I play at Atchichville there at Pelinda. Okay. And who's your favourite tennis player? Um, Roger Federer. Ah, good man. But he didn't win Wimbledon this year, did he? He just missed out. Uh, but he'll catch up again. And how long have you been playing tennis? More than five years. And have you enjoyed this morning here at the clinic? Yes. What have you been doing? Uh, playing tennis in that side, doing, uh, competing with other players. And was it nice playing with the South African players? Yes. And do you want to be a tennis player when you grow up? Yes. How old are you? Four. Four. And you've just started playing tennis? Yes. You enjoy it? Yes. Have you had a good time here at Irene this morning with play and stay? Yes. And the people have been good to you. It's nice playing with the South African players. Yes. Definitely, this is more play and stay tennis. You can see the difference with the ball. It's a red ball, way slower. So here you just basically start the kids with technique and all that. Yeah. And I believe you came through this uh, this program yourself. Yes, the Irene Irene Development Program. I came through that with um, Coach Stan Nogia. He worked with me a lot, yes, and Redverse. Okay. And now you've grown in the game and you're now teaching these youngsters, which is fantastic. Which is, yeah, it's a form of giving back into something that was a hobby that gave me everything that I had, yeah. Lloyd Harris, great to see you giving something back into tennis. But you didn't have anything like this when you started playing, did you, with play and stay? Uh, no, definitely. Um, it's great to see what these kids can do. I mean, uh, it's amazing at uh, such a young age what's, what they're capable of. And it's great to give back what, uh, what I never got, really. Yeah. 
And that special ball that they're using for, for these kids to play instead, just describe that ball to us and what, what it's trying to do to help them get into tennis. Yeah, the softer ball is very good because the, the normal ball will bounce too high. So this ball makes it uh, easy for the kids to actually hit the ball um, in, a, in a spot they got comfortable in it, like a hip heist uh, shot. So uh, I think it's really great, yeah. A couple of the shots and rallies I saw you had, you were a bit under pressure at some times. So. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, the kids are playing really well. I had some good fun. <laughs> what is it that you're doing different to anybody else? Because there are a lot of people in the same line as yourself. Yes, yes. Our, our main focus is online, um, getting out there to, to all the areas. Our big thing is that we're offering variety, we're offering across the brands, uh, we're offering expert advice. We're finding in the market that there's a lot of uh, players from junior level all the way to, to seniors that have have not got the correct equipment and if you uh, don't have the correct tools for the game it, it makes a big difference. So so that is our aim. That was my aim when I started the, the business is that we make sure that the people are playing with the correct equipment. A new member of the tennis family in South Africa is Cardio Tennis. This started in America and has recently been brought to this country. They gave a demonstration during the tie. Shark, high energy fun, I think that's the way to describe it, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. As you could see on the court, it was just a lot of fun and um, get all the young guys moving. And it's not just for young people as well, it's for seniors as well. I did a, um, a demo for the seniors committee the other day and I had a lot of fun. And it's, as I said, even if you can't play tennis, you can still have fun. These are a little bit, this was a little bit uh, the better players, but even if you can't play, we keep it moving and it's a fitness program in, in essence. You're combining fitness, but also an introduction to tennis from a different aspect. So people who perhaps think, well, tennis is too serious for me, this puts a different aspect on it, doesn't it? Absolutely, you know, Ach Mike, it's just, as I said, it's a lot of fun. And um, I think if you go to a tennis club and want to play tennis with a proper green ball, you get intimidated, you'd rather go to the gym or whatever. This is, I use the green balls, we use the cardio balls, as we say, and they're a lot slower. And yeah, any level can play. And so you don't need to feel intimidated. It's just, yeah, just come and have a lot of fun. You burn calories, we put everything on the, uh, we measure everything, we can see how many calories you've burnt, and yeah, just come for some fun. I see you had the iPad with you and you on there the heart rates and the way through. Again, this is a way of monitoring the players in a way that you can either know that you can push them a bit more or this is as far really as they can go at this stage. Yeah, what, what I do is, I, I because this was quite high intensity today, um, at stages I, I told some of the players just walk, go and pick up balls, take a rest, because all of them were in the highest zone, you know, in the fourth and fifth zone. So they were working and working pretty hard. But um, if somebody comes and they don't want to run so much, then I can measure it and say, all right, you can slow down a little bit. And I know I can just look at the monitor and it's actually a really good tool to use. I came into cardio after I've been playing because it started, um, Jock started it with Annette at our club in Brooklyn. So then one Saturday morning, I just went there and I just played. Do you find it's helped your tennis? It does actually, it helps your tennis, it helps your balance a lot because you have to keep moving the whole time and it just keeps you in the game most of the time because it's just running and then it's a lot of fitness so that's actually very good. I think the fun part is the most important part of cardio tennis, just enjoying yourself and playing tennis. One aspect of tennis that the spectators possibly haven't seen before is wheelchair tennis. This time our Junior Davis Cup team teamed up with a wheelchair player and played an exhibition much to the enjoyment of the crowd and the players themselves. Hey, how did you enjoy playing with the able-bodied Junior Davis Cup players there? Oh my word, it was amazing. It was such a great opportunity too to play with them and watch a crowd, watch wheelchair tennis. And I'm just glad we could show the world that wheelchair tennis is really a high standard sport. Now your aim is uh, Rio Paralympics next year, you're working hard towards that I'm sure. Yes, currently I'm 28th in the world, I need to be top 25, so I'm working really hard and yes, we'll go all the way. Okay, what tournaments have you got coming up so you can improve your ranking? Um, next month I'm going to Belgium, Germany and Bugacrest, so I'm working towards those to do my best there. Yeah, it's a great experience to play with the wheelchair players, great to play with them. I've actually never seen wheelchair tennis before, which is very interesting but they're great players and everything. Were you surprised by the standard? I mean, we had some wonderful rallies there. Yeah, I know, they they're great tennis players. I mean, as Bruce said, they're two and three in the world, which is amazing. So. 
Well, if you haven't seen it, then next time there's the SA Open in Joburg, you must come down to Ellis Park and have a look at some of the overseas players as well. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm sure we'll definitely go down next time to watch them play. Steve, wonderful array of clothing behind us. The, the tennis kit, is uh, that specifically for the South African teams? Yes, uh, we were asked by Tennis South Africa to do it and uh, we're quite honoured. It's been fantastic, it's been a great experience and I hope everybody likes it, yes. I see the ball girls as well have been kitted out by you, so it's a wonderful sight on court for the players and also the ball girls all to be dressed in similar clothing. Yeah, we've done it in line with the new uh, Tennis South Africa marketing strategy and their brand positioning within South Africa and it's, it's fantastic to be part of it and uh, we've had a very great response to it and they really look great, thanks. But it's not just tennis that you're involved with, is it? There are other sports that you do clothing for? Yeah, we're in a complete range. It's uh, close to 20 sports now, from rugby to cricket to tennis to hockey. In fact, um, cycling, we've got some fantastic stuff in that as well. So yeah, it's a full range and we continue expanding, yes. I know here you're on show for South Africa, but, but this is also available for the local club players, isn't it? Yeah, we've done a, a, an agreement with Tennis South Africa. It covers all the clubs in South Africa and any member or associate of Tennis South Africa where they get a special deal and special pricing throughout, be it a club or be it individuals, yes. The Irish non-playing captain, Connor Nyland, gives us some background on tennis in Ireland. Well, in the last uh, five years, we've had uh, you know five uh, representatives um, at main draw Grand Slams. James McGee, our number one, played the U.S. Open main draw last year. Uh, Luke Sorensen played uh, Australian Open and U.S. Open 2010-2011 main draw. And myself in 2011 played Wimbledon U.S. Open. So, you know, we're I think we're getting better. Um, we had a, a period there between say the likes of Matt Doyle and Sean Sorensen who were in main draws of Grand Slams for. 15, 20 years we'd no representative. So it's nice that we're starting to at least knock on the door and get inside the top 200. I suppose the next step for us is to try and get a couple of guys in the top 100 and they're competing week in, week out on the main tour and in the main draws of the Grand Slams. Traditionally, before the first tie, the opening ceremony is held where both teams are introduced to the spectators as well as the national anthems of both countries are played. The first match saw South Africa's Fritz Valmerons come up against the number one Irish player, James McGee. A tough opening two sets saw the players split those, but from there on it was Fritz Valmerons who dug deep and gave South Africa the perfect start by winning in four sets. The second match saw South Africa's number one, Tucker Forster, come up against Sam Barry. It was almost a carbon copy of the first match in as much that they both split the first two sets. But again, Tucker Forster was the man who dug deep and then managed to assert his authority over his Irish opponent for South Africa to take a 2-0 lead after the opening two singles. Tucker, opening day, going on in the second match with Fritz having put South Africa one up. You must have felt a lot better going on court in that situation. I must say, it definitely takes a little bit of pressure off. And, um, you know, just knowing that if you win your match going into a 2-0 lead um, takes a lot of pressure off the doubles guys. So, so Fritz got off to a great start and made things a lot easier for me. There are similarities between Fritz's match and yours. Both of you dropped a set and both of you had to pick yourselves up again. How difficult was that? Definitely wasn't easy because, um, you know, winning the first set, it's always, you know, if you got two sets to love, you're in a really good position. And, um, you know, if the guy evens up, then you have to pretty much start from scratch. But having uh, the team support and the crowd support just made things a lot easier. Yeah, that, that was coming over because we could see both of you and Fritz were digging deep in that mm. third set. Yeah. The crowd got behind you, the support from your own team members was fantastic. Yeah. So again, this is home ground advantage, isn't it? Playing its part. Absolutely. I feel like that makes um, that made the big difference. Um, you know, the guys that we played against compete very, very well. And, um, you know, if you can just lift yourself in the big points, um, that kick, because the margins are so small, that can make a difference. So uh, they, they helped us tremendously. There was a rather unusual introduction to the doubles match, and that was provided by Margaret's daughter.
Dean O'Brien and Ruan Rulofser played for South Africa, while James Kluski and David O'Hare represented Ireland. South Africa won the match in three straight sets, but it wasn't quite as easy as that, as they had to save break points in that third set. So, by winning that match, South Africa wrapped up the tie by taking a winning 3-0 lead after the second day. Dean and I haven't been playing together that long. We, we just recently teamed up and we've clicked right away. I mean, the chemistry has been great. We, we complement each, each other really well and on and off the court we enjoy each other's company and it's been great for me. Having a look at the game, I thought it's the first time really I've seen the two of you play doubles together. But I think what I saw was that, Dean, you were very strong off the ground. Ruins very strong at the net. So that what I call the architect and the executioner and the doubles pair is what we're looking for, is that the two of you have got that. Yeah, um, you know, about a month ago, we, you know, we decided to start playing together. And just like you said, uh, we do complement each other well, like you said, from the ground. I'm solid, he's solid up at the net, he's got the serve, I've got the return, so, you know, it just brings the all-round game, always bringing opportunities into the match, so it's working well so far. On the final day, Tucker Forster and Ruan Rulofser, deputising for Fitz Romerons, won the reverse singles for South Africa to wrap up an emphatic 5-0 victory. Before the tie started, South Africa's captain Earl Granger said the tie was going to be tough and he was proved right. We knew it was going to be close. We knew it was going to be touch and go and it worked out to be a touch and go tie and, and uh, we got lucky and it went in our favour. I wouldn't say we got lucky. I think what happened in the opening days, two singles, was that the guys dug so deep when they got into trouble in the in the second set in both of those matches. Well, I mean, Fritz coming out and winning uh, led the way, and then Tucker went out and they dug deep and they, they played tremendous singles. And the guys came out and played doubles. I mean, you know, the whole crowd was behind them, the team was behind them. It was just a, a great day and uh, it worked out well for us. What does winning that first singles do to the whole of the team? Well, we beat their number one play, it was 150 in the world. I mean, it lifts the whole team, gives us a real shot at winning the tie. And I mean, we knew Fritz was capable of doing that and the draw worked out for us. Now you've saved your place in, in the uh, second zone. Now looking forward, I would imagine the objective now is to get out of it going the other way and get promotion. What do you need to make sure that that team can get out of zone two and get into zone one? We need our players to, to carry on building their ranking and building their confidence to start playing at bigger levels. That's what we need. They need more opportunities, they need more experience out there against the bigger players, and we need youngsters to start showing their face as well. South Africa then have retained their place in Euro Africa Group 2 of the Davis Cup. And that wraps up their participation for 2015 and we now look forward to 2016 and hopefully more Davis Cup ties at home. How did you enjoy that experience? Yeah, it was fantastic. Good day's tennis. And South Africa played well? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it was very nice to have a straight set win. Yeah. Okay. And you'll be back next time we have a home tie here? Absolutely, yeah. How did you enjoy your day? It was great, thank you. Great tennis. You enjoyed seeing South Africa win? Yes, they're very exciting. So you'll be back next year when we have another home tie? Yes, absolutely. It was excellent. It was absolutely fantastic. Our boys played very, very well. So. Okay. And uh, so we, we win today. We stay in this group. So hopefully you'll be back next year when we have a home tie. Most definitely. And brought the kids along as well to introduce them to tennis. So a fantastic event, man. Well done to South Africa. South Africa played well? They did indeed, yes. But the Irish put up a great fight, huh? They did, they did. But unfortunately, the best team wins. <laughs> Not unfortunately in this case. You'll be back next year? I think so, yes. Well played, well played Team South Africa, very awesome. Yeah, but Iron put up a good fight though. Yes, they did. They actually played very, very well. Congrats to them. Unfortunately, it wasn't their day. <laughs> Was it nice seeing South Africa win? Yeah. Do they play well? Yes. Do you enjoy your day? Yes. And do you have a nice time? Yes. Okay. One of the true Irish supporters here. Uh, you're obviously supporting Ireland dressed like that. Absolutely, but I must have a little bit of the job description. I'm just converted to the Irish this week. Only this week? Just this week. You know, they've got really good Guinness here, so I've decided you know, maybe time to turn Irish. 
And I see you're wearing the South African colours. Yes, I'm excited. <laughs> so you're really, really getting into the spirit of Davis Cup. I am. I'm coming back next year. But you enjoyed your experience of being Davis Cup tennis here? Absolutely. First, first Davis Cup. Um, and it was great to see the guys put up a good fight, but sadly not as, not as strong as the, the other guys in green.